Hi, I'm Daryl Batania. I want to welcome you to part two of our Stampede Behind the Scenes tours. I hope you enjoy. We're going to start today's tour with several pieces that relate to Bill Heron. Heron was born in Okotoks. He started his career working for his father's cartage company. His father was also one of the key people in the early Alberta oil industry in Turner Valley. In 1939, Bill Jr. became the president of Okelta Oils. In addition to being a successful oilman, he became a passionate booster of Calgary and the Calgary Stampede. He had a lifelong interest in horses and all things Western, and he was an honorary life member of the Calgary Stampede. His tastes in things Western tended towards the more extravagant. This jacket was made by a celebrated California designer and clothes maker, Nathan Turk. An immigrant from Poland, Turk was known for his rather eye-popping Western outfits, produced for actors and singers such as Roy Rogers and Gene Autry. He was described as a master tailor, having apprenticed with a tailor in Warsaw as a young man before immigrating to the United States. He opened a shop in Van Nuys, California in 1923. He would sometimes incorporate Slavic folklore motifs into the Western wear he created. Turk was one of the people who helped to create the early cowboy image, an image that included beads and fringes and sometimes extraordinary embroidery. A label inside the jacket indicates that it's a Nathan Turk jacket and says individually styled. The jacket is beautifully made with plaid insets on the front and the back and the initial H on the yoke at the back to indicate ownership. As you can see, detail was everything, and with this jacket, some of it is subtle, and some less so. These boots were made to go with a parade saddle created for Bill Heron by John Foss. I'll be talking about a similar Heron parade saddle in just a minute. The boots were made by Riley and McCormick Limited, probably in 1947. Like the saddle you'll be seeing, some of the designs on the boot are painted and are sitting partially on a dyed dark red background and partially on a darker background. Much of the design consists of flowers and leaves. There are multiple colors used, although red and bright blue play a major role. Unlike some other boots we have in the Heron collection, these were obviously worn. The heels and the soles are worn down, a sign that they were amongst Heron's favorites, I think. This is another piece from the Heron collection. This shirt was made for Bill in about 1948. Like the shirt we looked at in the first tour, beads and fringes, along with piping, play a major role in the design. In this case, it's a beaded stem and flower design in clear red and green beads, white fringes, and piping. It reflects a design sensibility that goes along with a glamorous look and a glamorous saddle. Unfortunately, unlike Bill's jacket, we don't know who made the shirt, but like the jacket, detail is all with the design continuing on the cuffs and on the back of the shirt. This remarkable saddle was made for Heron by John Foss in 1947. It's one of a matching set that Bill had made for his family. Foss, who worked at Riley McCormick for six decades, was considered one of the best saddle makers in Alberta at the time, and one of his specialties was glamour saddles. The painted designs, red, white, and blue, were a fashion at the time, albeit a short-lived one. The design includes steer heads, flowers, and a bucking horse, as you can see. It also includes quite a lot of silver. The family won a number of awards in 1947, and they're recorded on small silver mounts on the skirt of the saddle. The awards noted include, amongst others, Ladies Glamour and First Gents Glamour, Edmonton, Junior Glamour, Edmonton, Gents Glamour, Nanton, and Ladies Glamour and Glamour Championship, Calgary Stampede. There is also silver on the back of the cantle, engraved with roses, and the name W.S. Heron. The design continues down to and includes the stirrups, embellished with yet more silver.
it would have made a remarkable impression when Bill Heron was riding down the street. This is a stock saddle, as opposed to the glamour saddle we just looked at. It dates from 1912 and was made by Victor Marden from the Dallas in Oregon. Marden opened his saddlery in 1900. Although he was only in the saddlery business for about 20 years, moving on to a sporting goods company and eventually a motor service company, he was known as one of the finest saddle makers in the Oregon Territory. This Martin saddle was given to Guy Wiedick by the board of the Calgary Stampede. It came to Glembo in 1976. Although it's a stock saddle rather than a glamour saddle, it is well embellished and quite lovely with embossed flowers and a broad variety of silver elements including conches and on each side several hearts engraved with Guy Wiedick's initials. There is also a silver engraving on the back of the cantle. Guy Wiedick, Manager, Calgary Stampede, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, September 2nd to 5th, 1912. Although much more utilitarian looking than the Heron Saddle, this one also shows remarkable workmanship. And although they had a sometimes rocky relationship, it also shows the respect that the board had for Guy Wiedick. This extraordinary outfit was created by Etta B. Platt, who lived in Waterton in southern Alberta. She created it in about 1912. It's made from burlap, wool, and cotton. Etta was born in 1875 in New York State. In 1900, she and her parents and her four siblings moved to Alberta. Etta made this outfit for her friend Vella Baptiste, for Vela to wear to rodeos and stampedes, most particularly the Calgary Stampede. The suit includes 11 horses, and the detail includes such things as smoke coming out of a chimney on a cabin and from the end of a cowboy's cigarette. Etta made a sister outfit for herself, but instead of a skirt, hers had shaps. Although we don't have an exact date for this one, we do think it was made between 1910 and 1912 when Vela was living in close proximity to Etta. As you can see, almost every inch of the skirt and the vest is covered by embroidery, which is in remarkably good condition and in colors that are still vibrant. The only change to the outfit over the years was the addition of a zipper on each side of the skirt at some point. The workmanship on it is quite remarkable. By the 1920s, fancy cowboy gear was in fashion. This skirt and vest and gauntlets actually started out as a plain, undecorated outfit from Riley McCormick in about 1922, but was transformed into something completely different. A lady named Louise Brazo added the, wild, the beaded wild rose design for her daughter Margaret. Margaret rode, wore the outfit as she rode in the Calgary Stampede and won the prize for best dressed cowgirl. Margaret's daughter B went on to wear the costume as well in the 1930s and up to 1949 and the costume continued to win prizes. The beads are of glass and steel. Given its age and use, the outfit and the accompanying gauntlets are in remarkably good condition with almost no missing beads and with colors that are still bright and vibrant after almost 100 years after Louise finished the beading. This riding skirt belonged to Flores Florence Ledoux, the wife of Guy Wiedick. This skirt is part of an outfit that came to Canada in Calgary in 1912 along with Ms. Ledoux. Ledoux is in the Cowgirl Hall of Fame as the only cowgirl to win three world championships for trick and fancy roping. She began her career in a Wild West show and that's where she met Guy Wiedick. She helped him to create the first Calgary Stampede and they went on to operate a dude ranch and produce other smaller rodeos. The skirt is made from sheepskin leather and, as you can see, very well used. Mm -hmm.